What's up guys, it's Rogue Tear here and welcome to another amazing video on the channel. So for today, due to popular request, you guys sure do love the Monarch deck. There are quite a few Monarch fans from what I'm seeing. The last video getting over three and a half thousand views, which is pretty insane. And it was, of course, two months ago. So now we are going to be doing an update. This, of course, does add a future card into the deck profile in the L in the End Exalting Morganite, which is the new Time Tearing Morganite card. It actually helps the deck a lot, makes Time Tearing Morganite searchable, which is fantastic. Also means we've got to facilitate ways of getting it into the graveyard in order to consistently get that search. But I'll show you guys how I've changed the deck in order to let that happen. And I also just recommend this deck if you guys are tired of the Snake Eyes format. The ban list is looming. This deck will never get hit ever again because this is Monarchs unless they get some broken support, which t makes them tier 1, which I'd love for to happen. But for now, not the case. So this is a deck you can pick up. Very cheap. Don't need an extra deck. Just a main deck and a side deck. I won't be showing the side deck today because that is usually up to the event you're going, personal preference, and local dependent to be honest with you but there will be a lot of new viewers watching this video make sure that if you do enjoy this type of video that you do subscribe leave a like down below hopefully a lot of you join and we hit the 3,000 subscriber mark which is really really nice and that's pretty much it from me so let's get straight into this deck profile so starting off with this deck profile we have triple of the Erebus the Underworld Monarch. Now, this card is the best Monarch in the deck. I don't care what anyone says. Ether is good. Ether was the one hit on the list. Erebus is better nowadays. Why? On Tribute Summon is going to be able to Foolish Burial two Monarch spell or traps to the graveyard from your deck or hand if you open the, the, the trap, which is pain, but you can send it from hand. And it's going to be able to non-targeting shuffle a random card from your opponent's hand or a card of your choice from the graveyard or their side of the of the field into the deck which is really really nice and you can chain block this too by the way if you have the continuous spell you can chain block it with a search if you have one of the little squires that you tributed off you can chain block it with idea there's a lot of ways to guarantee that this goes through this is an amazing effect also he has a graveyard effect which is a quick effect during either player's turn since this card was made a long time ago. It just doesn't say quick effect. It does say during either player's turn. Send a Monarch Spell Trap card from your hand or to the grave. You discard it. Target a monster in your grave with 2,400 or more attack and 1,000 defense. And that does include himself. Add it to the hand. So if they do out him, you can get him back. No problem. Speaking of Aether, here she is. At least I think it's a she. We play two copies because one Aether fuels the second Aether in the most in the most scenarios what does that mean well you tribute summon ether summon ether bounce ether back to in the end phase due to ether's effect and now you have a free ether during your opponent's turn that in combination with the monarch storm fourth acts as fantastic disruption obviously ether then being able to summon erebus and then erebus being bounced back to your hand in the end phase so really really fantastic card as I said, it does have the second effect, which I mentioned, which is during the opponent's turn, banish a Monarch Spell Trap from the graveyard, and immediately after this effect resolves, you tribute summon this card. This is a quick effect. And not once per turn. So if you have both in your hand, you can do both. No problem. For the other tribute summons, we have Double Vanity Fiend. This card just wins you games on the spot. It just says no. No specials. GG's. Next game, basically. And it's on 2-4 as well, so it's not easy to out. Annoying that card like cash tier fenrir r24 meaning that going second this card isn't that good because if they have a fenrir already on the field they can just crash it which is annoying but that's okay because we also play the one of the majesty's fiend this card is actually searchable which is really nice it's really annoying that vanity's fiend is not it has 200 more defense than it should but majesty's fiend has monarch stats with 2400 attack and a thousand defense meaning with time tearing morganite you can tribute summon, search your Majesty's Fiend, and then tribute summon again, locking them from activated monster effects, which is pretty nice. So this is it for the tribute summons. We play eight. People think, yo, that's not really a high number. And I agree. But also, this is Monarchs. We don't want to be bricking on these high-level monsters. These cards, remember, all these cards on their own do nothing because we need fodder on the field. So um, I think 8 is the lowest you could go. You could do more. You could do 10 up a Majesty, 
add a Majesty's Fiend and a Vanity's Fiend, you could do 10. I think 8 is fine. It's annoying when you don't have them in your starting hand, but this deck draws so much that you're perfectly fine. You can, you'll eventually see them. 8 is a good number to have in the deck. If you don't see any and you draw 2, you're going to have a good chance of seeing them. For the extenders, we have triple of the Cash Tier of Fenrir. I know this card's expensive, guys. I replied to all the comments in the last Monarch video. I know this card is expensive. If you guys want alternatives, here they go. We have Cash Tier Ogre, which has Monarch stats, by the way. So that's really nice. We have Super Quantal Red Layer as well. That's another good extender that just summons itself. It's obviously not as good as Fenrir. And we are trying to make this as viable as possible, as we always do in Rogue Tier. But those are budget options for you guys, because this is the only Cash Tier card at the moment. Maybe Theosis. That is kind of expensive. I think these are like 15, 20 pounds each, which, yes, is very expensive. Cut them, guys. Wait for a reprint. If you're picking them up solely to play in Monarchs, just pick up something else for the time being. You don't need this card in local play. Yes, it helps the deck a lot. Don't get me wrong. But again, it's expensive. If you're going to be taking this, if you're going to be trying to take Monarchs to some sort of competitive events, yeah, you need the Fenrir's. If not, substitute it with the red layer or the. The other extender that I mentioned, the Cash Terror Ogre. We have the other extender in the Cash Terror Rise Heart. One good thing about Fenrir is that it doesn't only have to pick up Fenrir, you can actually pick up Cash Terror Rise Heart, which would then just special summon itself as a second extender, which is really, really good. It locks you out of the extra deck and it lets you only summon Xyz monsters, which is a massive, massive problem on opposite day because we don't actually play an extra deck so we are fine we'll just get locked and be like oh no anyways as jeremy clarkson once said for our last extender we have the unchum fright now the thing i like about the extenders in this deck is that fenrir gets you a second extender or a free card unchum fright draws you a card and then specials itself so both extenders act as extra hand advantage and bodies which is absolutely freaking fantastic if you don't know what Ancient Fright does, it's a Monarch custom card, I'm pretty sure. It just doesn't have Monarch in the name. But what it does is it places itself in the Pendulum Scales, and then if you only have Ancient Fright, or you don't have any extra deck, only Ancient Fright, you're able to destroy this card, place it into the extra deck, and draw one card, which is nice. Also, once while it's in the extra deck, you will be able to just special summon it, it doesn't start a chain, special summon to the extra monster zone, you now have a free body, and you preserved your normal summon as well, which is very important. And if it leaves the field, it banishes itself, so it doesn't conflict with the field spell either. This card is just perfect. A good thing about playing the end exalting Morganite is that if we open double, or if we draw into a second, usually that's really bad because we have to wait till the next turn to do something. But now with the end exalting Morganite, we're able to just add time tearing Morganite and place it onto the bottom of the deck. So we can just save it for later on, which is amazing. For the Squires, we still do play the Squires. We have double Idea and double Eidos. Why only two and two? This is a hand trap format, baby. If you think you're going to resolve Idea. I got news for you. Nine times out of ten, you are not. So we always leave Idea as a last resort. Yes, it gets two bodies onto the field, and Eidos gives you an extra normal summon. That is amazing. But half the time, you're going to get you're going to normal Idea, and then you're going to get hand trapped, and you're going to have wasted your normal on that. So that's why we play as many extenders as we do, and we don't play that many squires. So that is it for the monsters. Seven tributes, or eight tributes, seven extenders, and four squires. For the spells, let's go with Triple of the Domain. This is the win con. Why is this a win con? Well, if you control a Tribute Summon Monster and have no cards in your extra deck, your opponent cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck. Now, do I need to say why that is good in modern Yu-Gi-Oh? This is an absolutely broken field spell for Monarchs. And if you don't play Domain, you are allowed to play an extra deck. There's versions of Monarchs that do play extra deck, but this card is just so damn good. This is iconic field spell just floodgate your opponent out of the freaking game because you can also another cool thing is you can reveal a monarch in your hand reduce its levels by two that is not once per turn guys that is not once per turn if you have two domains you can reveal either ada you can reveal erebus or ether twice in your hand they become level four just normal summon them and attack they won't get their effects because it's only on tribute but you can normal summon huge bodies normal summon a monster 2800 attack i dare you that is power. It also has a 
niche third effect, which is during the damage calculation, if a tribute summon monster you control attacks, it gains 800 attack, which is really nice and helps you break over the 3k barrier that's, that Konami seemed to just put most boss monsters at. Triple of the Monarch Stormforth. A quick effect spell card that lets you tribute your opponent's monsters when you would conduct a tribute summon. Do I need to tell you why this card's good? It locks you out the extra deck. Oh no, we play none. So, insane. Remember, all these cards are searchable as well. Through two means, through the Pantheism Banish effect or through Tenacity of the Monarch. So, highly searchable utility cards like Stormforth are amazing. Or the best draw spell I've ever seen printed for a deck, hands down. Engage is not a draw spell, guys. Yes, it can draw, but this is a dedicated draw spell. Pantheism of the Monarchs. Now, this is a card that was at one for ages because it was just that goddamn good. We have it at three now, and it's still amazing. What does it do? You send a Monarch spell trap card from your hand to the graveyard. Sadly, that is cost, so if you get Ashley, you go minus two. But then you draw two cards. That is not once per turn, guys. You can go, you can cycle through multiple, even four. You can cycle through four of these if you wanted. You three pantheisms, you banish one, and then Idea returns it from the banish to your hand. You can use it again. You can draw loads of this card. This card is amazing. And if that wasn't good enough, it has a banish effect, which is you can banish this card from your grave, reveal three monarch spell trap cards from your deck, and your opponent chooses one for you to add to your hand. And you shuffle the rest back into the deck. You might think, damn, that's pretty frustrating. Why doesn't it just add? It basically does. It doesn't say you need this. It doesn't say different names, guys. You reveal three with the same name. Three Stormforth. Which one's your opponent going to pick? Exactly. Three Domain. Which one's your opponent going to pick? Three Tenacity, which is next. What is your opponent going to pick? Absolutely bonkers card. Amazing. Speaking of Tenacity, Konami, please give a hollow upgrade. Uh, I've had the rares for a long, long time now. I think they deserve an upgrade. Triple Tenacity of the Monarchs. A... Rota for spells and traps with extra steps. That's the best way I can describe it. You have to reveal a monster in your hand with monarch stats, which is 2,400 attack or 2,800 attack and 1,000 defense. Add a monarch spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. Sadly, this is once per turn. So once you use one, if you see multiple, you're going to want to be getting rid of them with the pantheism. Still a very amazing card. Adds you pantheism. Just, I, do I need to say more? Just adds you the best draw spell in Yu-Gi-Oh! For the one-offs, one return of the Monarchs. This card is frustrating. Why couldn't they just give Monarchs a Tenacity of the Monarchs S card just to add monsters? That would make the deck so much more consistent, you have no idea. The amount of times that you struggle to get a Monarch monster is insane. Like, damn, I've drawn like six cards and I still haven't found my Tribute Summon. GG's, I guess. That just happens, Yu-Gi-Oh! If this card wasn't on Tribute Summon, you just activate it and search, it would be a 3 of, but it's not. So let me explain what this card is. It's a continuous spell, which is nice, I guess, but also loses to back row removal unnecessarily. What does it do? Well, you cannot press someone else for the extra deck while this card's on the field. Big whoop. When you tribute someone a monster, you can activate one of these effects. You add from your deck to your hand a monster with 2,400 attack and 1,000 defense, or 2,800 attack and 1,000 defense. Remember, that has to be with a different name. But that's it. And this card has to be face up to resolve, obviously. I don't know why they specified that, to be honest. So, yeah. Frustrating card, but you tribute summon a monarch. Obviously, you have loads of access to the Morganite now, the time tearing Morganite. So, you have two normal summons. The good thing about Morganite, it doesn't conflict. I see a lot of people saying it conflicts. It doesn't conflict with Eidos, guys, okay? Eidos gives you an additional normal summon. Time Tearing Morganite changes the amount of times you can normal summon from 1 to 2. There's a difference, guys. You you can't stack multiple effects that have that do the same thing. You can't stack multiple Morganites. For example, if you already had a Morganite and then you can change it to 3, you can't. You can't stack multiple Eidos. But because they're two different effects, they're two different ways of changing the amount of times you can normal summon, they don't conflict, guys. Amazing. But yeah, returns okay. As I said, search the Majesty's Fiend and... Just lock your opponent out of monster effects is pretty nice. March of the Monarchs. This is usually what you want to get. You want to place it, and you want to just make your mon your Monarchs and your Tribute Summons just basically unoutable. Remember, they're going to be floodgated, and then they're going to not going to be able to target them or destroy them with card effects either, and they are pretty big as well. So this card is amazing. They have to out this card first, and then they can out the Monarchs or the Tribute Summon monsters, which is really nice. 
And for the last Monarch card, we have double, well, double, we have one, sorry, of the Prime Monarch. It does have two effects, which is what I was getting at. It is a continuous trap, but it doesn't act like it. Why is that? Well, I'll read you the continuous trap effect first, because it comes up maybe one in a hundred games. Once per turn, you can target two Monarch spell trap cards in your grave, shuffle them into the deck, and draw one card. You know, that's a pretty alright effect, to be fair. That's not bad. It recycles your Monarch cards back into the deck, which keeps your... Erebus and your ethers being able to send and use their effects but usually 99% of the time you want this card in the graveyard why because you can banish another monarch spell trap card from your grave and special summon this card in defense position as a normal monster with a thousand attack 2400 defense and this is not treated as a trap card why is that good well because it's naturally a trap card you're going to be able to just use this as a quick effect during your turn and your opponent's turn and this is basically a free body send this to the grave Banish a Monarch Spell, summon this, immediately tribute it. Really, really nice. Amazing card. Only need one. Once you have the one in rotation, it's you're fine. And it's a really nice super rare as well, coming from OTS Pack 2. That's how old Monarchs are. Power Spells, Double Book of Moon. I was playing this card at 3, had to bump it down to 2 to play the new spell card that I'm going to be showing you guys. It still comes up during, if you open this turn one, you might think, wow, this is pretty bad. Until you realize, normal Idea, they chain Imper and Vela. You chain Book, Book your own monster, dodge Imper and Vela. Think about it like that. During, obviously going second as well, it just trades one for one with negation because they have to negate this, which is amazing. For example, they had a Baron de Fleur. I know they can't have that anymore because it's banned. That's just the example I'm giving. Baron de Fleur's on the field, Book and Moon target Baron. They have to negate it, or the Baron goes down and they lose the negate, so either way it's a win. That's why I really enjoy the Double Book of Moon. One Pot of Desires. I had to cut this card down. I was playing three of this at one point. We're just playing the one now, and the good thing about playing one Pot of Desires is you can never draw Pot of Desires off Pot of Desires. So usually you cycle through all your important one-offs, get them into the grave, get them on the field or whatever, and then commit the Pot of Desires just for two extra draws. And sometimes, if you break... Drawing two can help you on brick. We play the one of Foolish Burial Goods. This is a very spicy card now because not only can it send you your Morganite cards, but it can also just naturally send you your Pantheism of the Monarchs to grab any spell that you need from your deck to your hand. It can also send you the Prime Monarch as well if you just want a free body. This is a lot of utility for one card, guys. You may think, wow, it's a minus one. It is not because the cards it sends plus you which is amazing time tearing morganite this card was at three we can now play it at one because it is searchable off and if i'm very nice i'm going to add the picture so let's see how nice rogue tail was feeling at editing we have the end exalting morganite i'm going to explain to you what the end exalting morganite does first and then we're going to explain the time tearing morganite for you guys that don't know what the cards do so the end exalting morganite is another picture of a guy holding a rock with a hand. Looks pretty cool. And they're going to apply this effect when you activate this card. So for the rest of the duel, you apply the following effects, the same as Morganite. You cannot activate monster effects in the hand. That's for both of these. You have... Your monsters can attack twice during each battle phase, which is nice. And your monsters inflict double damage to defense position monsters in the battle phase, which is pretty nice. Okay, be my thing. You know, that's good, I guess, going second, but going first, that's pretty bad. It has a graveyard effect, guys. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add one Morganite card from your deck to your hand, and then place one card from your hand to the bottom of the deck. Hello, searcher for Time Terry Morganite. So what does Time Terry Morganite do? Well, you cannot activate monster effects in the hand. That's why we can't play hand traps. The only card this conflicts with is, of course, the Aether. But that's okay, because the effects are so good that we don't mind sacrificing the ether for this card. You draw two cards instead of one for your normal draw. So if you survive one turn, you plus off this card, which is amazing. And then, the most important effect is, you can conduct two normal summons or sets per turn, not just one. That is the game changer here. That is the game changer. That is why we play this entire package. Immediately, you just get two normal summons. And of course, if you use the Eidos you have three which is really, really nice you can banish this card from your grave discard one time terry morgan your opponent can activate monster effect while you normal summon this turn that's pretty nice but we only need to play the one time tearing so that effect will never come up 
So that is the end of the deck profile because there's no extra deck. And as I said, the side deck is up to preference. Let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you will see this video. Make sure if you did get this far, you must enjoy my voice or this profile, which I think both warrant a subscription to this channel. We are almost at 3K, guys. Let's make sure we hit that before the end of this month. That would be amazing. Remember, we set the goal of 4K at the end of this year. We're almost at 3K now, and then we've got a couple months to hit 4K. I believe that we can do it. I know a lot of you will watch this video because Monarch fans are absolutely based. You guys are non-stop, always trying to find new ways to innovate this deck. I love that about you guys. Never change. Make sure that you do subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.